Guess what book I'm reviewing today? Here is it. Come on, what goes around could come back to kill you by N.J. Porter. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and to the review of Carmen, what goes around could come back to kill you by NJ Porter. This is actually my first time reading works by NJ Porter and I'm putting on a customized shirt as you can see, Carmen over here same as Carmen here. So the book is actually an enthralling read to me. And my review of it is actually gonna be very short, straight to the point, and quite concise. And if at the time I love murder thriller novels with a blend of mystery, with a blend of mythology, with a blend of magic, you're gonna love picking up Carmen, which is very enthralling to me. I particularly love the characterization. The characterization which eventually have me loving some characters and having some huge resentment towards other all the characters like Dr. Pato. I don't know why. Reading through the book just have me be having some resentment towards her, particularly for her thinking that Akwate is wasting his time investigating Kama's Kate, thinking that Kama cannot be the culprit of the murder and quite a lot of other things. My review of the book is actually going to be spoiler-free. I'll be talking too much about the book. I just want to give you a short video book recommendation just for you to have an idea of what NJ Porter has had to communicate in this fantastic novel titled Carmen. So before I proceed in my review, I'd love to read to you the synopsis at the back page of the book. Jackson Arquette is an 18-year veteran detective who has been assigned to work a homicide investigation. While inspecting the crime scene, finds that the victim had been horribly mutilated with their body parts scattered about the scene. After locating one of the legs of this victim as it stuck out, foot forced from behind a pile of garbage bags, a trail of blood flowing downward on the wall near it, led a quit to then discover the other leg atop of a fire escape directly above him. This one scene marks the beginning of a trial of an explained murder soon to follow one after another. Meanwhile, at a psychiatric hospital on the outskirts of the city, a patient by the name of Carmen Adamson is in a season with a therapist discussing traumatic episode she experienced during her teenage years. This episode resulted from being both mentally and physically abused during the times that she was bullied. Over the many years, Carmen had struggled mentally with trying to forgive her tormentors. Until recently, after meeting a friend, she decided to seek restitution in her own way. As both of these characters' stories unfold, they will ultimately find out why their parts have crossed. And that's actually what you stand to gain within Trukaman. That's what you stand to experience. That's what you stand to see reading through this amazing novel that really piqued my interest in an enthralling and captivating manner. So, this book details the story of Jackson Aquate as well as Cameron and Dancing, which got me thinking that both of them are the primary and secondary protagonists in the novel. You know, the story is set in the city of Annapolis. In this particular city, there's a terrible homicide case that was found that, you know, Aquate was made to investigate afterward. There was a terrible murder that leads to the mutilation of certain body parts, intestines, legs, stomach, all of that. And this scene actually kept repeating itself over and over again. Actually, the Fox victim was Mr. Osborne. And Mr. Osborne happened to be a bus driver to a particular school, very notable school, actually. So while investigation was going on, trying to know the dead, trying to know the curse, the perpetrator, trying to know Mr. Osborne's murderer, it takes quite a lot of time, quite a lot of investigation, because it was quite hard to point out that this is actually the case. The detective are having a hard time recognizing one or two 
routines just for them to be able to pull up their investigation and case together. But then Alquit was able to find fingerprint on the wall, which is actually one of the reasons why the case is quite very hard to point out that, okay, this is the real cause of the issue. This is the perpetrator because it all seems very weird to them. Then over and over again, there's this cause, this murderer happening over and over again in the city of Annapolis. First of all, it was Mr. Osborne. It was followed by Stacy, then followed by Mike. And hilariously, these guys are friends. Like, they are friends together with Chris, which is a fourth person. And, you know, from the investigation that the detective were doing, the investigation from the other side, they were able to collect things together. And from the Fox victim's case, they were able to realize that Stacy and Mike and Mr. Osborne attended the same school. And Stacy and Michael rode in the same bus as Mr. Osborne. So going back 14 times, trying to investigate if Mr. Osborne had been involved in any fight with someone else that might have cost them their life, involved in a fight that might cause a person want to retaliate by taking their life away. So this led to tons of investigation, though it was very hard to propose, it was very hard to tell what exactly could be the case of this. So this was actually followed up over and over again until Chris' intervention. Actually, Chris had been intervening even during the death of Stacy because Stacy happens to be his girlfriend. And when Michael, too, was involved in this murder of a teen, it got Chris feeling perplexed, feeling confused, feeling insecure, getting scared that he might be the next victim, he might be the next to die. So this actually followed quite a lot of scenarios, scenarios, investigation, ups and downs, trying to find the case, the perpetrator of this murderer. Now, this is when we're being introduced, I think, towards the middle part of the novel, we're being introduced to Carmen Adamson, which happened to be a fantastic protagonist who's doing a quite mysterious, very sad, and very enthralling. So Carmen Adamson happens to be one of the patients in a psychiatric ward they're about, and she has been a patient, she has been in this facility for over eight years. So once the investigation traced back that Carmen could be the one responsible for this murder, responsible for this case, Akwete took it upon himself to pay a visit to Kama's psych ward. And when he got there, he was able to meet with Kama's therapist, Dr. Patel. The description of Dr. Patel in the book is actually very enthralling. But for some reason, I seem not to like Dr. Patel's characterization. For her, actually, to think of Akwete as wasting his time investigating a case she thinks Carmen isn't the culprit. I don't like her for that reason. And the way she talks, the way she behaves, she attempts to send professional. But for some reason, I find her quite remorseless. I find her quite hypocritical and self-centered. I don't know, it's just a feeling I have towards this particular character. So over and over again, when Aquit visit the facility, Dr. Pactel, with all sense of confidence, were like, oh no, Carmen has been in this facility for the past eight years. She has never been involved in any crime. I think your investigation is wrong. Maybe you should go back and put it for some other suspect over and over again. Very annoying. I don't know why she would think of Carmen this way. The story actually keep unfolding over and over again until if even though, actually, even though Dr. Patel have been involved, she has heard over and over again that Kama possesses some supernatural power, that she has been associated herself with another patient in the world who seems to have witchcraft, trying to separate their, their spirit being from their physical body to go and haunt their offenders. And again, Kama, during a season, had mentioned it to her, season over season, countless times, that she's seeking out revenge. And even though after all of this fact, Akwete coming to the facility and Dr. Potter telling him that, oh, I don't think Carmen will be involved in any atrocity. God was sometimes feeling that she's trying to protect Carmen. But then, towards the ending part of the novel, there's a switch which I wouldn't love to mention in this review. And that's actually one of the things that got me curious about the novel. You know, I don't want to spoil the book. I don't want to talk too much about it. But then, I want to leave in the veil that even though Carmen is being looked upon as a suspect. Will the detective been able 
to culture that's for the fact that most of our atrocities is being performed spiritually the killing she had is being performed spiritually even though afterward dr potter found some traces of death underneath kama's fingernails she took it to the lab the result came out that the death underneath Carmen's fingernail happens to be blood. All of these things keep unfolding over and over again. And then back then into the investigation but from the detective, it has been known that the sensation, the, the damage caused to every victim looks like that that was done with fingernails, with blade and all of that. It's a lot of suspect. It's a lot of thriller. It's a lot of murder. It's a lot of, you know, action in it. More reason why I love to consider Carmen a fantastic murder thriller with a blend of mystery in it. I so much love it actually. I love the description. I love the characterization. I love the storytelling techniques. Nature Porter is very descriptive and his description truly made for an interesting read, truly made for an interesting discussion. I wouldn't love to spoil the book. I just want to give you a short video book review just for you to have an idea of what Nate Jack Porter has started to communicate in this fantastic novel titled Carmen. So I would love you to find out that Carmen, even though she's very young, even though she's in the psych ward, how could she have escaped the facility going about coming to murder of not just only one person, not just only two? And again, was Chris able to survive just for the fact that he's actually one of the tormentors of Carmen back then in high school? You know, it's a lot of thrillers actually. And in the novel, I kind of think that there's some bit of morals that the novels kind of try to communicate, especially to the young ones, especially to those in high school, not to get themselves involved in bullying and stuff like that. Because actually, based on the title, titled Carmen, what goes around could come back to kill you and whatever you do to another person you would surely reward it like either it's been good or bad actually it's a fantastic novel and it truly rewards my sincere recommendation and if i should talk about Nate J. Porter's writing style, oh my god, it's very descriptive, very amazing, quite enthralling, very lovely, and full of action. So if you'd love to get a copy of Carmen, I left a link in the description part of this review for you to get a copy directly on Amazon. And if you watched this video to this point and you're yet to click on the subscribe button, I want to urge you to please click on the subscribe button over there. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you can get notified anytime I release new videos thank you very much for watching my short video book recommendation of Carmen a novel by NJ Porter see you in my next video goodbye